Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Spirits and Ghost Stories. I'm your host, Thomas Ahrens. And I'm Carly Bird. We've made it, guys. 12 weeks. Episode 12. Three months. Three months, everybody. I cannot believe we actually did this. Oh, my goodness. Carly, it has been a journey. Does that make today an anniversary? Yeah, we're actually at an anniversary now, which is absolutely crazy. Cheers to you. Yep, cheers to you, too. Carly, how have you been? Swamped. You've been swamped? What's been going on with work? I mean, it's not really work. It's more so wedding planning and the fact that we had a destination wedding, but then we came home and we're kind of doing everything opposite. We kind of literally did honeymoon, then wedding, then wedding reception. And the wedding reception is this coming weekend. Mm -hmm. And there's like 150 people coming. So it's a lot to plan for. So that makes me swamped. It's going to be it's going to be a lot of fun. And the thing is, like with this, and I don't know everybody else that's actually been married or has a significant other. um, It's stressful, but we got to have fun with it until before we get into today's topic. Carly, what are we drinking tonight? Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited to introduce to you the nelson's norton known as n squared it's a brand of wine that we came across at casanel vineyards in loudon county virginia so we posted our podcast slash youtube video on facebook and someone local reached out to us about a haunted vineyard that they own and invited us to come try some of their wines so we stopped by over the weekend and we had a sweet flight and then they sent us home with two of their most recent um wine choices and this is one that we came home with which was the nelson's norton I'll go ahead and give you the description, official description, because it's delicious. It's 100% Norton aged in French oak barrels for 20 months. It's smooth, velvety red. Flavors and aromas include red fruit, baking spices, caramel, and hints of earth. It's perfect for your Thanksgiving and Christmas dishes. So it's more of a drier side red wine, but it's also exactly what I'm looking for when I'm drinking red wine, and I love it. It is fantastic. And I'm not that much of a, if you guys know me from our other episodes, I'm a very much of a sweet wine individual. Um, the, yeah, the dry that's why tart. we got the flight of the sweet wine yes, when we went there because I, Tom's like, well, give me all your sweet wines. I have to try a sweet wine. Like anywhere I go, I want to try the sweet. I don't mind a red necessarily every now and then, especially when it's paired with dinner. Um, but this is fantastic. So a huge shout out to them for sponsoring this episode. Um, oh my gosh, yeah, and more to come. So we'll we'll definitely debut their next wine that they sent us home with for the next episode. And then we also have some pretty cool stories to share with you guys that um, it relates to local haunted This vineyard houses. is yeah. haunted. Oh yeah, we have, dog. we have a story for you. Yep. Shh, don't tell them. Oh, you don't tell them that yet? No, that's okay. for the next one. It has to do with something with our dog or what used to be our dog and what happened pretty sketchy stuff but anyway huge shout out to them for sponsoring this and um we got an interesting little change up today today we're both going to be reading a story yeah um i'm gonna be going first and then uh my lovely wife will be uh coming up with the next one i had to get enough just to get a little bit of liquid courage in me so today we're actually going to uh creepy pasta and i was looking over there i was looking for some of their other top cryptids it's been a while since we've done actually a cryptid um a cryptid, for you at home that don't know, is kind of the scientific name for like a monster paranormal creature. And that's when I stumbled upon this gem, and that is the rake. Oh, the rake. So what do we know about the rake already? Well, tell me. luckily, I'm going to give you a little bit of insight into that. The rake resembles an overgrown humanoid-like dog that is pale with grayish skin. It is over six feet long, with hands that are long and sharp. The creature is normally seen on all four feet. What's weird is this creature's eyes are super large, like twice as the size of a human's eyes. It lacks a nose, and its mouth is smaller than a human's. But when provoked or attacked, the mouth opens freely on like a hinge down to the neckline, showing hundreds of dull, blunt teeth. Yeah. It looks like Gollum with a weird-ass fucking mouth. That's what it looks like. Okay, well, um, I did not picture a rake like that. Well, 
time now for the tale of the rake. I had just returned from a trip to Niagara Falls with my husband Seth, my son Justin, and my daughter Claire for the 4th of July weekend. We were all very exhausted after a long day of driving, so my husband and I put the kids right to bed and called it a night. At about 4 a.m., I woke up thinking my husband had gotten up to use the restroom. I used the moment to steal back the sheets, only to wake him up in the process. When he turned to face me, he gasped and pulled his feet up from the end of the bed. So quickly, his knees almost knocked me out of the bed. He then grabbed me up and said nothing and held me tight. I realized that he didn't actually leave the room. And that jostling woke him and startled something else. After adjusting to the dark for half a second, I was able to see what caused the strange reaction. At the foot of the bed, sitting and facing away from us, there was what appeared to be a naked man or a large hairless dog of some sort. Its body was positioned its body was yeah, its body was disturbing and unnatural. Yes, I know I read the P wrong. I know I'm going to hear about that in the comment section, but I have been drinking some wine, so sue me. Its body was disturbing and unnatural, as if it had been hit by a car or something. For some reason, I was not instantly frightened by it, but more concerned as to what it was. At this point, I was somewhat under the assumption that we were supposed to help him. My husband was, was peering over his arm and knees, tucked into a fetal position, occasionally glancing at me before returning to the creature. In a flurry of motion, the creature scrambled around the side of the bed and then crawled quickly in a flailing sort of motion right along the bed until it was less than a foot from my husband's face. Uh, excuse me? He got real intimate. Yeah. Real fast. The creature was completely silent for about 30 seconds, just looking at my husband, gazing at him. The creature then placed its hands on his knees and ran into the hallway, leading to the kids' room. Ah! I ran down to the hallway. And once I got to my kids' room, I screamed and I, I turned, I went for the area. I screamed and ran for the light switch, planning to stop him before he hurt my children. When I got to the hallway, the light from the bedroom was enough to see it's like crouching over my daughter Claire's bed. I let out a loud scream and I flipped the light on, on my daughter's bedroom. The creature turned around and looked at me directly, covering what seemed like was blood. The creature ran down the stairs while my husband and I rushed to help our badly injured little girl. What? She was hurt? Yeah. That was fast. The creature attacked her. The creature didn't want anything to do with mom and dad. The creature ran down the stairs. The creature ran down the stairs while my husband and I rushed to help our badly injured little girl. Later that night, Seth's car got into a head-on collision. My son Justin and I were the only ones to survive. What? Because they were racing to the hospital to get him saved. This happens so fast. All right. There's only two of them are living at this this point. Yep. Okay. We got two because they ran to get to the hospital. And apparently, a head-on collision should happen. Okay. Being a small town, news got around pretty quickly. The police were helpful at first, and the local newspapers took a lot of interest as well. However, the story was never published, and the local television news never followed up either. It was really strange. For several months, my son Justin and I stayed in a hotel near my parents' house. After we decided to return home, I began looking for answers myself. I eventually located a man in the next town over who had a similar story. We got in contact and began talking about our experience. He knew of two other people in New York who had seen the creature we now refer to as the rake. 
It took the four of us about two solid years of hunting on the internet and writing letters to come up with small collection of what we believe to be accounts of the rake. None of them gave any detail, history, or follow-up. One journal had an entry involving the creature in its first three pages and never mentioned it again. There were, however, many instances where the creature visits. The creature's visit was one of a series of visits with the same person. So this creature kept coming back to people's houses and watching them. Good stalking thing they them. stayed at a hotel. Yeah. Well, how did you not know this thing like broke into your house? Yeah. Good how question. did the thing even get in there? Yeah. How did it even get in? Where did it come from? Most people also mentioned being spoken to, my daughter included. So her daughter must have heard something. What did it say? This led us to wonder if the rake had visited any of us before, or last encounter. I, I set up a digital recorder near my bed and left it running all night, every night, for two weeks. I would tediously scan through the sounds of me rolling around in my bed each day. When I woke up, I heard nothing. By the end of the second week, though, I was quite used to the occasional sound of sleep while blurring through the recording at eight times normal speed, just to try to get through it. This still took almost an hour every day, of constantly going through it, trying to listen for anything. On the first day of the third week, I thought I heard something different. What I found was a shrill voice. It was the rake. I can't listen to it long enough to even begin to describe it, to transcribe it. I haven't let anyone listen to it yet. All I know is that I've heard it before, and I now believe that it spoke when it was sitting in front of my husband. I don't remember hearing anything at the time, but for some reason, the voice on the recorder immediately brings me back to that moment. The thoughts that must have gone through my daughter's head make me very upset. I have not seen the rake since he ruined my life, but I know that he has been in my room while I slept. I now I know and fear that one night I'll wake up to see him staring at me. This was the tale of the rake. Okay, then move. <laughs> so after the family's dead, like, listen, just leave. Yes. Move. I have some questions. Start a new life. <laughs> get a new house. <laughs> you don't have to stay there. I mean, you're not wrong. You don't have to stay there. Like, I have so many more questions. Like, okay, here, example. Example, guys. Everyone. Okay, why a recorder? Why not a camera in your room? Because how old is the story? Like six years ago. Cameras were a thing back then. iPhones have been around for like, what, 10 years? Yeah, Three I Three years? Know. Four years? Something exactly. like that? Exactly. Why a recorder and not a camera? Okay. I just assumed that it was an old story. Well, what do you think about it then, Sherlock? Um, Most people had like recorders. I mean, they were cheaper. The recorders. They were cheaper than well, cameras. You, yes, but I mean about the story. Oh, what I think about the story? Yeah, Sherlock. I mean, it it ha it'll happen real fast. That was that was a real fast story. Uh, thanks, creepy pasta. You kind of made me feel like I saw my whole life flash before my eyes, and then all of a sudden there was an alien. Wait, hold on. I've just been envisioning the rake as an alien. Is the rake an alien? So, if we turn to the TV screen that's right here. And you can look in horror. Uh, all of you guys will see this on the podcast on your YouTube channel that we will show an image of the rake. But since we do not have that super fancy technology of that nice monitor right there that we can just flash through there, I am going to show you a picture of the rake. Okay, because um, have you ever seen the movie with um, look at the picture, Walking Phoenix, where there's like corn um ladies and gentlemen signs. we're gonna play that game of what is she talking about signs yes it's called signs with mel gibson and joaquin phoenix yes 
Okay. So that's the rake. That's what I picture when I hear rake. The alien that pops up on that. So she's looking at the picture of a rake right now. We're going to have Carly Bird's first impressions of the rake. Looks like an alien. So the mythology of the rake, based on creepypasta and also other places and firsthand encounters with this creature, is that it could be a type of human that actually went underground. And through evolution, it became this. Hmm. Interesting, right? And that's why it's... And that's why it walks on all fours Mm -hmm. because it's like underground. To me, the biggest thing I'm talking about with this whole thing is like, how the heck did it break into their house without them knowing about it? Right. This thing seems real clumsy. How can you tell that from a black and white photo? Because it's the size of a human, but it walks around on its hands and knees. This has been a moment with Carly Bird. So I just hear it down the hallway. That's how it goes. I would still be scared the shit out of me. All right. I mean, it would still scare me too, but loud, right? Right, everybody? It would be loud. All right, you're up. All right. I have a story about the rake. The whole time I found, well, read this story to myself, I basically envisioned the same alien that was on, um, signs so feel free to do so as well give me one so one second to pull it up all right prepare yourself for the tale it comes in darkness Mm -hmm. as i sit in my bed writing this i cannot overcome the pain and sheer anguish that this creature has caused me. Why did this happen to me? Why am I its prey? All of my troubles now, everything that worries me is because of this thing, this rake. There are many with stories to tell and I swear I've read them all ever since my occurrence. I've dedicated myself to learning as much as I can about this monstrosity. I've seen the drawings victims have made of it, its cold, lifeless eyes, its bony, jagged body, and pale gray skin. I shudder at the thought of it. Two years ago, after my best friend Matt went home for the night, I laid in my bed thinking of the great day I had had. We played some football, climbed on top of the school, got into mischief. Typical teenager things to do on a boring Sunday night. Depending if you're like, how old are you? My goodness. These are not Loudoun County kids. I've done that before. They're not Loudoun County kids. You've never crawled on the top of your school building? They're not Loudoun County kids. All I have to say is, the story resonated with me because... I have sat on the top of my school building. Anyway, this was the worst day of my entire life. You blood us now, thank you. I suffer from insomnia and have for the past six years. I find it extremely difficult to sleep at night, especially in the hot summers. I live in a three-story apartment and I'm on the third floor. You should get the idea of how humid and stuffy it gets in here. I slept soundly that night, like a newborn child. I must have drifted off ten minutes after I closed my eyes and plunged into the darkness of my room. The time was 12.51 a.m. I remember the ticking of the clock. Hearing every second smoothly pass through my ears. I loved the sound of that red clock on my wall. Now that I look back to it, I can almost sense that it was counting down. Counting down until he came. I awoke, hot and sweaty, sitting up on my bed like I had just experienced the worst nightmare of my life. It was not a nightmare that had awoken me though. It was the sound of light footsteps. A light footstep slowly inching across my apartment's main hall. 
blurry and dazed, I looked around and saw nothing. It took ages for my eyes to focus, but eventually something caught my eye. It looked about six feet tall, Mm. crouching in the hallway, connected to my room. It had one arm resting on its knee, the other planted on the carpet. It watched me, unblinking. At the time, I had no idea that the rake even existed. How the hell does it keep getting into these places? That's, this is the big Houdini thing. Continue. Thank you for that interruption during this intense moment of the story. <laughs> it knew I did. My first thoughts were to scream, but I tried to keep my cool. I don't know how long we stared at each other. The room was pitch black, and all I could make out were its body positions. I feared that if I looked away, it would charge at me. I feared for my life. I heard crunching. My eyesight isn't near perfect, and without glasses, I can hardly make out the text that's about a meter away, but there was no mistaking this action that I've seen humans do many times over. It was chewing. Just behind this creature was a still object about five and a half feet long. It took me, it, to me, it looked like a pile of clothes. And then I saw the cruel reality. There was a body of a naked man behind the rake, its head removed from the torso, nowhere to be found around the creature. And I did not look around the room for fear of the beast. There was a pool of black on the floor of what I assumed to be blood, and its arms were completely removed, one of which was in the rake's mouth as it chewed on the meaty flesh and bone, staring at me unmoving except for its jaws. I screamed. I screamed as loud as I could. The moment was horrifying. It moved now, its whole body slowly crawling across the room. Get the fuck out of there! Until it was at the foot (laughs) of my bed. It moved silently up to me as I was paralyzed in fear. It whispered two words to me in my ear with its head next to mine. It was a shrill voice that I could only make out to be. I am here. I am the rake. You belong to me. It will come back for me one day. It will seek me out again. I cannot run. I cannot hide. It is the rake. And that was the tale. It comes in the darkness. So you want to say that my story was fast? Like, she just kind of, like, completely glanced over the fact. It's like, there's a dead body in my house. Like, who the hell was that? Great question. Was it a family member? Like, does was she have a, a family member? Stranger? I don't know. Or or sleep paralysis. Yeah. I, you know, anytime I hear a story about the rake, I just automatically assume, oh, sleep paralysis. Anytime I hear a story where it's like they were in bed and I can't move. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. this was literally, no offense, guys, this is Haunting on Hill House, like episode one or two. Of the oh, yeah. Season. Which uh, I'd love to watch again. Uh, about that. When are we going to start that again? Uh, when you don't work in the morning. All right. We'll talk later. That's what I thought. Because she, yeah, because that's a series where you, you binge it and you don't just like watch one episode and be done with it. <laughs> so you can watch your British dramas and you can like hop those on and off. Bob's Burger. British You're not going to do that. It's a meat eater. It's a it's a humanoid creature. The creepiest thing to me is like, how the fuck does it get in there? Every time. Like, it's a huge being. That's the whole thing. It's massive. Mm-hmm. But it's always spotted in people's houses, right? Yeah. That's the stories. And I feel like every story I've come across, it's in a person's house. It's in their bedroom. Okay. Well, any like pictures people have of it is out in the woods. Not really lining up here. Mm-hmm. How is how is it getting in the house? Yeah, I mean, I think that's why I don't think it's a real creature. I think it's demonic. Oh, I think it's spiritual, something like that. Like, okay, the idea like how else could it gotten in there? I mean, uh, we've done the Wendigo. We've done 
uh, hellhounds. We've done like certain yeah. things that were real mm -hmm. on this channel so far. And so there's a smell, there's something there. There's no smell with this thing, but you don't smell it. It's just weird. But yeah, like with the real animals we see, there's like, there's this tangible thing of like, it's real, it's there. Um, besides the kid being like, what? Sorry, keep going. No, what? You just laughing randomly, just yawning. Um, what? I love you with all my heart. We were talking about how you think it's a demonic thing because it doesn't have this it, – it, it just shows up. And we've had other stories in the past like the Hellhounds, the Wendigo, and things like that. Slender Man, Mr. Smile, all these things where some of them are real and some of them are mm -hmm. demonic creatures. And the demonic creatures can like obviously we're aware can just like vanish in a heartbeat or whatever and go back to their other – world i don't know so where say. would you rank this okay um it makes sense that it is a demonic being but in all honesty i rank this as an alien i rank this story it's okay it's definitely um you know the rake is definitely a it's created online it definitely bit it's it's it was created through group group think threads and things of that right which is why i say aliens like it's definitely supported through that alien culture of oh we saw a flying saucer what i meant is there's there's context missing from the story yes i think things like the living all of stuff, them yeah yeah i still like think like compared to like to like other stories and stuff there's a lot more backstory and there's a lot better thought that goes into the storylines uh i think the thing that's really nice with the rake is you're taking an image and you're diluting it so you're taking a human your humanized image I and mean, you can find the rake pictures all over the internet i did when i searched for this thing looks um, like an alien so it's an alien i guess no, I think um, definitely stay tuned for next episode. Super duper excited. Sorry to just jump around like this. But um, next episode, episode 13, we're going to get into some local hauntings. And I'm super excited about talking about that. Yep. Um, my name is Thomas Aarons. I'm Carly Bird. We'll see you next time. See you guys. Bye.